Our devotion for today is entitled, A Devotion for Christmas. And it is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. In verse number 14 of the second gospel of Luke, it is written, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The song the angels sang on the night of Jesus' birth contains the whole Christmas gospel. Every word in it is filled to the brim with the gospel. And that is why the song is repeated in our traditional divine service. Glory be to God. That's not a very good translation. The word glory stands for something that can hardly be expressed in our language. For it's God's glory, his unspeakable being that excites us and at the same time causes us to tremble. It's something that fills us with joy and attracts us to him. Yet at the same time, it makes us want to cover our faces. It is a light that our earthly eyes cannot endure, a light none of us can reach. When Isaiah was allowed to catch a glimpse of it, he said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. We should really be prevented from ever experiencing this light. But a wonderful miracle occurred. God descended to earth. 
not in his splendor, but in the shape of a newborn human child. And now all heaven's angels sing amazingly, overwhelmingly, and joyously about this wonder. Glory be to God, they say. To him be the power and the glory that fills the heavens with songs of praise. But now that power and glory descends in order to give peace to the earth. Peace is another word so abundantly filled with meaning that it's hard to translate. It means both peace and tranquility. It means harmony, a delightful and secure situation. The wonderful order of things God incorporated in creation, but was lost. Now it will be restored. All will be well again. Forgiveness, renewal, and all the wonderful powers of divine mercy will descend upon us, upon men on whom his favor rests. That's what it says. We can translate it this way, people with whom he is pleased. What's important is that God's wonderful grace, his fatherly love, his desire to save, his untiring mercy, now embrace us completely, especially the downtrodden, the outcasts, the unfortunate, those who are badly treated. It was no accident that only the shepherds received the message. They belonged to the lower classes of society. They were only allowed to take the work no one else would take. That's why they kept watch all night while Bethlehem's residents slept soundly. Let us pray. To you, Lord, be the glory. We know it. You alone are holy. You alone are good and just. We know that your holiness would destroy us if we would force ourselves into your world. Even your love burns us. Everything about you is good but we're not the kind of people who can meet you and live in your presence. And yet now you come, Lord, with all of your glory, so strangely hidden and in such a way that you meet us as a brother and a friend. What incomprehensible love you must have, Lord, when you could do so much to have fellowship with those who are the complete opposite of you. You have come to us, down among us, so far down that no one could be farther down or farther away. Blessed are you for your goodness and for your boundless mercy toward us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas.